Honor is not the exclusive property of any political party. Older men declare war, but it is the youth that must fight and die. Freedom is the open window through which pours the sunlight of the human spirit and human dignity. Fishing is much more than fish. It is the great occasion when we may return to the fine simplicity of our forefathers. Blessed are the young, for they shall inherit the national debt. Economic depression cannot be cured by legislative action or executive pronouncement. Economic wounds must be healed by the action of the cells of the economic body, the producers and consumers themselves. About the time we can make the ends meet, somebody moves the ends. It is a paradox that every dictator has climbed to power on the ladder of free speech. Immediately on attaining power, each dictator has suppressed all free speech except his own. Words without actions are the assassins of idealism. Peace is not made at the council, table, or by treaties, but in the hearts of men. The use of the atomic bomb with its indiscriminate killing of women and children revolts my soul. There are only three ways to meet the unpaid bills of a nation. The first is taxation. The second is repudiation. The third is inflation. Wisdom oft times consists of knowing what to do next. When there is a lack of honor in government, the morals of the whole people are poisoned. Public health service should be as fully organized and as universally incorporated into our governmental system as is public education. The returns are a thousandfold in economic benefits and infinitely more in reduction of suffering and promotion of human happiness. Competition is not only the basis of protection to the consumer, but is the incentive to progress. America, a great social and economic experiment, noble in motive and far-reaching in purpose. Prosperity cannot be restored by raids upon the public treasury. The pause between the errors and trials of the day and the hopes of the night. When all the routines and details and the human bores get on our nerves, we just yearn to go away from here to somewhere else. To go fishing is a sound, a valid and an accepted reason for an escape. It requires no explanation True liberal government is founded on the emancipation of men. I'm the only person of distinction who has ever had a depression named for him. Engineering training deals with the exact sciences. That sort of exactness makes for truth and conscience. It might be good for the world if more men had that sort of mental start in life even if they did not pursue the profession. 
with impressive proof on all sides of magnificent progress, no one can rightly deny the fundamental correctness of our economic system. Wisdom consists not so much in knowing what to do in the ultimate as knowing what to do next. Peace can be contributed to by respect for our ability in defense. If the law is upheld only by government officials, then all law is at an end. It is just as important that business keep out of government as that government keep out of business. Freedom does not die from frontal attack. It dies because men in power no longer believe in a system based upon liberty. We must have government that builds stamina into communities and men. That makes men instead of mendicants. New discoveries in science will continue to create a thousand new frontiers for those who still will adventure. The human animal originally came from out of doors. When spring begins to move in his bones, he just must get out again. Moreover, has civilization cement pavements Office buildings, radios have overwhelmed us. The need for regeneration has increased, and the impulses are even stronger. Upon the farm of the uncle with whom I lived, we did know of the mortgage as some dreadful damper on youthful hopes of things that could not be bought. I do have a vivid recollection that the major purpose of a farm was to produce a living right on the spot for the family. When we are sick, we want an uncommon doctor. When we have a construction job to do, we want an uncommon engineer. And when we are at war, we want an uncommon general. It is only when we get into politics that we are satisfied with the common man. The opportunities of America opened out to me the public schools. They carried me to the professional training of an American university. I began by working with my own hands for my daily bread. The slogan of progress is changing from the full dinner pail to the full garage. A whole people with the ballot in their hands possess the most conclusive and unlimited power ever entrusted to humanity. We have not yet reached the goal, but we shall soon with the help of God, be in sight of the day when poverty shall be banished from this nation. In America today, we are near a final triumph over poverty than is any other land. My earliest realization of the stir of national life was the torch parade in the Garfield campaign. On that occasion, I was not only allowed out that night, but I saw the lamps being filled and lighted. At 15 years of age, I left school to practice the profession of office poor in a business firm in Salem, Oregon. Economic freedom cannot be sacrificed if political freedom is to be preserved. The New Deal repudiation of 
democracy has left the Republican Party alone the guardian of the Ark of the Covenant with its charter of freedom. Once upon a time my political opponents honored me as possessing the fabulous intellectual and economic power by which I created a worldwide depression all by myself.